teaches my wife is a retired elementary teacher of 40 years. During the course of her career, she had many opportunities to work with student teachers. And she said it never failed at the end of the semester these student teachers would come to her and say, Miss Applewhite, you've coached me and observed me for the entire semester. Said, do you have any advice or recommendation as I go into education and I pursue a career in teaching? Without hesitation, my wife would say, yes, marry rich. You don't make a lot of money in teaching. Okay. At this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker today, Mark Cahill. You see his bio in the program, but there's something that you won't see in there that some of you kids might appreciate. Mark was a basketball player at Auburn University. He played and was uh, road roommates with a guy by the name of Charles Barker. I think y'all all have heard of that gentleman. So if you would, Mark. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> hey, y'all, good afternoon. Uh, Larry, the question we've all got is, uh, did Sandra marry Rich? <laughs> oh, she did. Okay, all right, just want to know that. And uh, the, uh, so uh, I have a lot of stuff in my hands, and I've got a 15-minute talk. So we're going to see if the speaker can follow instructions and get all this done in 15 minutes. Do you think he can, yes or no? Let's see what happens. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for just a wonderful chance to be here. Thank you for just a, a good reminder how quick life goes as we see some uh, young people that we used to be that person just a short time ago. Father, use this uh, short time here. Uh, glorify your name. Uh, draw people closer to you. And this encourage us as we get ready to walk out of here. So we thank you for it. And we ask it in the great name of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So when you listen to a speaker, don't always, you're not going to remember everything they say, okay? So don't ever worry about that. But try to grab nuggets, I tell people. Grab one or two, maybe three nuggets that you can take, apply to your life, and walk out the door with, okay? So uh, I, I do chapels for some of the pro teams. So I was speaking to the Falcons one time, and I, I told the fellas there, I said, fellas, I want you to think uh, 100 years from now. And they're, they're looking at me. They're like, I said, no, I said, I want you to think 100 years into the future. They're looking at me, and I said, well, I said, we all got one thing in common. And some player shot. He said, we're all dead. I said, we're all dead. And I said, 100 years from now, it's not going to matter if you're white, black, Asian, Hispanic. 100 years from now, it's going to matter if you're a millionaire or a pauper. And most of those guys sitting there were millionaires, okay? 100 years from now, it's not going to matter if you beat the Saints tomorrow. And the head coach happened to be sitting back there. And he looked up real quick from his play chart. He's like, what? Because he keeps his job if he beats the saints, right? But 100 years from now, all that's going to matter is, one, did you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And two, what'd you do for him? It kind of simplifies life. Once you can figure out the eternal part of life, it gives you a lot of direction in life. A lot of us meander through life, right? But if I can get the eternal one right, then I got the direction I need as I go through life, okay? So one of the things I want to encourage you young people with, as you go through life, say hello to people, Okay, it's okay to say hello to people. 99% of all people are going to be friendly, going to be nice. Okay, I was a very shy kid at your age. Okay, and as I became a Christian at 25, my mom watched me to slowly come out of my shell. And I say hello to people. Okay, remember every friend you have today, at one point you were a complete total stranger. Somebody said hello, and now you're buddies for life, right? Okay, uh, some of the older people, one of you said hello to somebody, two weeks later you're married with a bunch of kids, right? That's all it took, right? Saying hello and here we are, right? So I always encourage people to say hello. Well, I'm at a coffee shop one day in Atlanta and there was a, a, a young man across the table from me. Well, he said hello to me first, okay? He was Stephen, a senior in high school, 17 years old. So we're talking about life, what he's doing. He was a monk for two years. I mean, this kid had more life experience than I've had in my whole life, right? So I asked Stephen an interesting question. I said, Stephen, uh, what do you think happens when you die? He said, very interesting you should ask me that question. I said, well, why is that, Stephen? He said, well, I almost died yesterday. I said, what do you mean? Well, him and some of his friends, they were going down the Chattahoochee River in a raft. He falls out of the raft. He can't what? He can't swim, okay? Uh, he thought the Chattahoochee was knee and hip high the whole way down, okay? Incorrect, okay? He's falling down. He's not wearing a what? A life preserver. One of the girls jumps off the raft, grabs him by the wrist, drags him to the shore, okay? And we're sitting there talking the very next day in a coffee shop, okay? And uh, we, we, we had the most fascinating talk. I've seen him four or five times at, at the same coffee shop and then somewhere else. 
uh, gave him one of the books I wrote, and he's reading to think about the eternal matters, but he's thinking about that, okay, because just of what happened in his life and then a little conversation that we have, okay? So I always tell people one of the big joys in life is a conversation, okay? The last couple years we've been stuck behind screens, not saying hello to people. I talked with a kid from Georgia Tech the other day, Barnabas. We talked 20 minutes somewhere. Sir, thank you so much for the conversation. Like he hadn't had one in a while, okay? So one of the real joys is so say hello to people, get in conversation, get out of your little comfort zone a little bit as you, uh, you know, go off to college in the workplace and do that, okay? So one of the questions I ask people all the time is if you could have any job on planet Earth and money wasn't the issue, what would you do? Okay, if you have any job on planet Earth and money wasn't the issue, what would you do? It's a great question. Okay. Um, the reason it's a good question is because I have buddies my age that look back and say, man, I wish I would have. Okay. And I encourage young people, don't live life I wish I would have. If you want to try something, give it a shot, and then let's see what happens with that. Um, I taught Mr. Applewhite's son, Major, uh, 30 years ago back in Baton Rouge, an eighth grader of mine. I asked Major one day. I said, Major, I said, if you could have any job on planet Earth and money wasn't the issue, what would you do? He said, oh, Mr. Cahill. He said, I'd be a college football coach, okay? Well, Major's a college football coach now, okay? And I reminded him of that uh, a few years later after that. He said, yeah, but Mr. Cahill, in eighth grade, I wanted to be a football coach. In ninth grade, I wanted to be a policeman. In 10th grade, I wanted to be a fireman. I said, but that's half the fun of being young, right? We got those ideas of things we want to try. But I just encourage you, don't live a life I wish I would have. If you want to give something a shot, give it a shot. Then the other thing a lot of us adults will tell you is don't be scared to fail. It's okay to fail. It's okay to make a mistake. It's not the end of the day, and it's not the end of your life if you make a mistake and do that, okay? Someone asked me a question the other day. She emailed me a question she uses with people, and she asked people the question, uh, what are the three most important days in your life? That's a great question. What are the three most important days in your life? So as you, you go out to eat tonight and celebrate and stuff, maybe ask that around the table. What are the three most important days in your life? Well, I was having a dinner last month with uh, some of my uh, Ukrainian friends, and so I asked that question to the waitress, and then I would just start going around the table, and I asked this one uh, Ukrainian Severin, I said, uh, what's the three most important days in your life? He said, oh, that's easy. Being born, being born, and the day I got married. I'm like, oh, interesting. I knew where this was going to go. He said, he, what he meant was being born physically. Second, being born what? spiritually, and then the day he got married, okay? It's very interesting. We've gotten this wide-ranging conversation, but that's what a good question can do is uh, open up that and get into that conversation and do that, okay? So a good nugget for you, three letters, JPT, okay? JPT, just passing through, okay? It's a good little simple statement, JPT, just passing through. So think about you started high school, ninth grade, your seniors, four years went how quick? Yeah, boom, like that, right? I remember at Auburn University at the athletic dorm, you, do a, you cut through the trees to get to the Haley Center, which was the, the main academic building. I remember walking through there as a freshman. I remember walking through there as a senior, and I actually stopped. I said, Mark, you just walked down this path as a freshman four years ago, and it went literally that quick of four years of college, zoom by that quick and do that, okay? Um, this service will begin. This service will end, okay? So we're just uh, passing through. Um, the last time I saw my mother was a Thursday evening. I went over to see her. Um, she was not doing well. And I said, Mom, I said, it's time to go. I said, it's time to pass over, okay? I got the feeling she was trying to stay around for my brothers and sisters. And I said, Mom, you're born again. You're saved, right? She said, yes, I am. We talked about that for a good stress. I said, Mom, it's okay to pass over, okay? I said, just do me a favor. When you pass over, she said, okay. I said, tell Jesus I said hello, and I said, I'll see you real soon. Okay, I kissed her on the forehead, walked out the door on a Thursday night, uh, left Friday to go speak at a men's retreat, and uh, got that text message um, on Sunday morning that mom had passed over because we're just passing through this life and how quick uh, it can go and do that. Uh, Romans 13, and that knowing that the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Life goes quick, doesn't it? Older people, life goes quick, doesn't it? Yes or no? 
Yeah, now, I don't say that to them because we would never understand it that day. We get a little age under our belt, and then we realize literally how quickly this life goes by. I was speaking at a uh, military high school in Alabama, and I got there uh, early for a speaking event. So uh, you're never late for a speaking event. Okay? You've got to be there early. There's not a backup speaker. Okay? So uh, three simple things. Always be on time. Okay? Very, very important. Always have a good work ethic, okay? and always have a good attitude. You have those three things, you'll always have a job. Always. I tell that to people in coffee shops, people I meet on the MARTA train downtown. Be on time, have a good work ethic and a good attitude, you will always have a job. Because people out here who hire and fire, they're looking for people who are on time, have a good work ethic and a good attitude. We will work with you. We will do anything we can to make you successful and do that. Okay? So I'm at this uh, military high school, got there early, and it was a beautiful spring day. And next to the high school, uh, there was a cemetery. Now, I typically don't hang out in cemeteries, like never, but uh, there was a cemetery, and you could tell by looking at the tombstones, it was these older tombstones. And so sometimes I like to see what's written on them and stuff like that. So I got out, and I started walking through the cemetery. It's a nice, small little one. And I'm looking at it, and all of a sudden, I'm standing in front of this tombstone, and I stopped. And one of the biggest moments in my life happened at that moment. I'm looking at this tombstone. And this young man was born in 1882, and he died in 1900. 1882, died in 1900. He died at 18, okay? 18, nice young person. That's not what hit me, though. What hit me, though, was 1996, just like it was yesterday. It hit me in 1996. What hit me was he had been dead five times longer than he'd ever been alive. Five times 18 is 90, it was 1996. And I stood in front of that tombstone, and my wheels started going. I said, Mark Cahill, you're going to be dead 10 times, you're going to be dead 100 times, you're going to be dead 100,000 times longer you're ever going to be alive. You sure you got the right answer? Okay, because once we're on the other side, that's it. When it happens, they're going to do that. There's an old business adage that a lot of us older people know. It's not what you know, it's what? Who you know. You know the right who. A right who can open up doors for you. If you want to get into computer programming and your uncle's Bill Gates, well, you have no trouble getting a job at Microsoft, right? It's pretty simple, right? John 14, 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh the Father but by me. Jesus is saying, I'm the right truth that you need, okay? I'm the who that you need to find out who that is, right? Find out who he is. Did he literally walk on planet Earth? Did he die on the cross for the sins of the whole world? Is the res resurrection real? It's the kicker that sets him apart from every other person that's ever walked on this earth, okay? You were singing about truth, uh, John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, so remember, as you go through life, uh, don't search for something to believe in. I need truth. We have to search for truth. And once I find truth, I want to stand very strong upon that truth and do that. Okay? Um, I was on the martyr train coming back the other day. Uh, I was down witnessing at the Taylor Swift concert Friday night. And uh, so I was on the train going back. There was a young man sitting across from me, and uh, I started chatting with him. And this is one thing I told him. Good nugget of truth for you, Okay. I said, I said uh, young man, he was a junior, senior in high school. I said, if I take your jacket, okay, you can go to Walmart and get another jacket, okay? If I take $10 out of your pocket, you can, you can go get a job and get $10, okay? But once you have knowledge, nobody can what? Nobody can what? Nobody can take it. Once you got knowledge, you can do a million different things with that, okay? Start your own business, write a book, okay? So keep building uh, the knowledge you've got in your head as you go through life, okay? Good nugget for you, all right? To be a leader, you got to be a reader, okay? To be a leader, you got to be a reader, all right? Um, our culture growing up, we were young, we were readers, right? Now it's we got screens in front of us all the time, right? Uh, two best ways to be a reader are to shut your phones off and shut your TVs off best way to be readers, okay? Those two devices actually have off buttons on them. A lot of people have not found them yet, but they're actually on those devices, right? But once I learned to shut a phone off and TV, I don't even own one. Uh, I've been able to read a lot, and then I began to write as well. So I wrote, I've written a few books. I wrote a book called One Heartbeat Away. Um, really fun book. I tried to see if you could prove. Could you prove a God? Could you prove an afterlife? Um, there's a whole section, chapter on creation evolution. A lot of high school, a lot of college kids write papers out of that chapter and do that. But then all my nonfiction books, just full of stories people I chat with and what they believe. So uh, in this book, I chat with a famous atheist. Uh, Tiger Woods is in here, Magic Johnson. My other books are uh, 
Michael Jordan, uh, Kanye West. I ran to Kanye downtown one day. We talked for 15 minutes on a, right in front of a hotel. Why? I, I was intrigued with him, what he believed, but if I wanted to see him in heaven, I needed to invite him to come and do that, okay? Um, Jeff Foxworthy, the comedian, he actually called me one day, ordered 20 copies of this to give to all of his uh, buddies. Uh, got a letter the three years ago in the mail from a, do you know the name Mark David Chapman by any chance? So the guy who shot and killed John Lennon, he was actually reading this book and uh, wrote me a letter and he's wrestling with, can God forgive uh, the murder that he committed and do that, okay? So it's a real fun book. A lot of people like this book. So I've got one for each of you as you walk out. Uh, I'm a giver. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than receive. So I love to bless people and give. And they, we do these little mini books as well. We're going to give you one. A lot of high school kids give them out to their buddies and do that. So we're going to bless you with one of those when you walk out, and I hope you enjoy the book. And uh, we got some for the adults as well back in the reception where you can grab one back there on your way out there and do that, okay? All right. Last thing for me, doing good. Uh, okay, so uh, I go back to high school reunions, all right? And when you go back to a high school reunion, uh, I always would pull the yearbook out um, because, peop I, because you don't want to... Uh, look at people and not know their names. I was the tallest kid in the class. So they were going to remember me. I knew that. So I, I got the yearbook out, going back to my... And so I go back and look at names and faces, names and faces. Yes, it's black and white. Yes, it is. And uh, so uh, I've seen some really nice ones in the years previous. So I was going through this, this yearbook, getting ready for a reunion, and I got to the end of our picture section, and uh, there was... Uh, all of these students put a, we got to, they put like a different accomplishments we did, but then we got to put a senior quote in here, and I didn't remember this, and so I started highlighting all this, and I realized that I had all these graduating seniors, they put a quote from one book or on one topic, okay? And what was that book they quoted from? Go ahead, what was it? It was the Bible. Okay? And when I went back to one of my high school reunions, I walked up to the people that were, who put a Bible quote in there, and I asked them a question. Okay? If your number one quote was from the Bible, okay, I have a question. Why didn't you share that with me in high school? Okay. Well, Mark, you know, we didn't think you'd be interested. Okay. We, we didn't worry about your reaction. No, none of that's important. If you believe Jesus is the right way and the answer for life, you need to tell people that, right? Well, I got saved between my uh, fifth and tenth year high school reunion. I go back to my 10 year high school reunion and I started witnessing to people, got addresses for 200 people, wrote a letter to each person in my graduating class, sharing with them what I had found out, sent a second letter, uh, a third thing, my, sent my first book, my second book. I sent over 1,000 pieces of mail out to my graduating class when I found out Jesus was right, because I didn't want anyone not to know that, because I want to spend eternity with them. And if I do, I have to be willing to share that with them. And that goes right back to you about being strong, you were talking about, David. Uh, Joshua 1.9, and I have, not com have I not commanded thee to be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dis dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest, okay? God's gonna be with you wherever you go and do that, right? You trust him, you follow him, and the journey of life is fascinating, but we got to make sure we know where the right destination is as well, okay? So JPT stands for what? Just what? Just passing through, okay? It's a quick journey. Uh, just make sure you know where the end of the journey is when it's all said and done, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for just uh, a nice time to be here. Thank you for uh, just uh, all the adults here who have invested in these young people. Uh, especially thank you to moms and dads. Um, parenting's a little different today than... Back in the day, and as I remind people all the time, Father, that the best investment you can ever make in your entire life has nothing to do with the stock market. It has to invest in the life of another human being. So thank you for the hours and hours of time that I've invested from the parents. Uh, thanks for the ups and downs. But thanks again, just really especially for the unconditional love that uh, parents have for their young ones. It's just uh, a beautiful sight to see. And so we thank you for that. And we do. And we ask it in the wonderful name of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.